So in regards to the peace process, how do you respond to the claim that the United States should not have a greater desire for peace than the parties to the conflict, namely Israel and Palestine? Only those, I, I dare say, that do not really understand the dynamics of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict can make that assumption. The truth of the matter is, without the in direct active involvement of the United States, there will be no resolution to this uh, horrifying conflict that's been going on for so long. The United States is the only power, and I repeat, the only power that has the means, the ability, and the kind of influence necessary to exert on both Israel and the Palestinian uh, to try to get the kind of concession that is absolutely needed from both sides in order to forge a peace. So the United States is not just another country, it's the only country that can do so. As you well know, the United States is a close ally of Israel. The Palestinians know that only the United States can exert the kind of influence necessary on Israel to make this type of concession that's needed. And Israel knows that only the United States can exert a similar or different kind of concession that is needed to forge an agreement. So the United States role is indispensable and I think the next president of the United States, be that President Obama or President Romney, will have to take a very close look at the situation and, and agree and come to the conclusion that if they want to see peace in the Middle East, specifically between Israelis and the Palestinians, the United States has to take the initiative and, and begin the process and not leave it until an agreement is reached. Now, if and when the Israelis and Palestinians sit back down at the table, uh, what issue do you believe serves as the most ideal starting point for negotiation? The truth of the matter is, in my view, borders are the most important thing to begin the discussions with. Because with borders, you can, you can also solve probably 80% or so of the settlement problem. Borders also will early on define the parameters of the, Israel, of the Palestinian state. And that is very, very important for the Palestinians. So I'm, from my perspective, the Palestinians should drop the idea of a freeze on the settlement and agree to sit down as long as Israel is prepared to discuss borders first. And that in and of itself could lead to a discussion about the settlements, which settlement can Israel retain and become part of Israel proper, which settlement will have to be abandoned, and will settlement might be even stay in the, in the West Bank under Palestinian jurisdiction. But borders is the key to beginning this kind of process that will lead to a resolution to the Palestinian enterprise. And from that on, of course, you can discuss national security because from the Israeli perspective, borders have also impact on Israel's national security. I personally don't buy into that argument, but nevertheless, from the Israeli perspective, if borders do have such an impact on Israel's national security, then that further um, support the argument that the discussion ought to begin with borders. Well, now that uh, Jordan has appointed an ambassador to Israel after a break of two years, uh, should Jordan take a step back into the conflict and become a mediator again? Jordan has and will continue to have very vested interest in uh, peace between Israel and the Palestinians. Uh, the Jordanians are terrified because some Israelis talk about uh, there is already a Palestinian state and called Jordan, being that 55 or so percent of the Jordanian citizens are Palestinians. But that is only one element of it. The second, which is probably just more important, is the fact that unless there is an agreement between Israel and the Palestinians, the Jordanians will continue to feel some vulnerability. And they want to feel that a solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict will eventually settle the ongoing combustion within in the territories and in the bilateral relations between also Israel and Jordan. For them, a solution is a critical. Now, the role that they can play is significant, probably more in the West Bank than, for example, in Gaza. And I think they can be very helpful in, in persuading also Mahmoud Abbas, the president of the Palestinian Authority, to, to make the kind of concession. But as far as Gaza is concerned and Hamas is concerned, I think the only 
party that can exert the kind of influence on Hamas will have to be the government, you know, led by the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. Well, on that note, can you give us your assessment on that relationship between the Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas, uh, what the MB can do to influence Hamas, and how that might affect the, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? In my view, the last thing that the government of Egypt, uh, led by the Muslim Brotherhood now, would want to see a renewed violent conflict between Israel and Hamas. Uh, for them, this would be no-win situation, because uh, if the conflict becomes serious, uh, Israel might decide to conduct another incursion, major incursion, into Gaza. The government of Egypt will have to decide if they come to the aid of Hamas, they could suffer a hum serious humiliation by the Israeli forces. And if they don't come to Hamas's aid, the, the, their public uh, will, will uh, protest that they have abandoned their so-called brothers in, in, in Gaza. So the Egyptian government, being that it is so preoccupied with the internal problem that Egypt faces today, the last thing they want to have is another conflict uh, over which they want to avoid almost at all costs. Based on what I know from significant Egyptian sources, they tell me that uh, Muslim Brotherhood has been advising, telling the Hamas not to start serious trouble with Israel because this could actually make the situation extremely worse for, for the Muslim Brotherhood. Moreover, they really would like to see an end to the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians, knowing full well that Israel is a reality, they cannot really do much about it. And my personal view is that only the Muslim Brotherhood can exert the kind of influence necessary on Hamas to change its direction, specifically in relation to Israel.